Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode I hope to achieve orbit, but first we're going to test this rocket which I strongly doubt will achieve orbit, though it has 8,000 meters per second of delta V which is quite a long ways towards that. Uh, but it's it's all Arabies. It's uh, one Araby on the upper stage. It's got, uh, what is it, 7 on the second stage, 19 on the third stage, and another 19 on the fourth stage. And they're arrayed in threes, uh, well, and there's a central one and then two circles around it. A uh, circle of 6 and a circle of 12. Um, right now, I'm a little bit worried about the center mass, center of lift situation. Now, it does get done with this stage pretty quickly, and uh, these run out in 3 seconds. So whatever mass is in here will go away, but that doesn't seem to move the center mass very much at all, actually. Um, so we'll have to see about that. I would have thought that with a tall rocket like this, the center mass would be higher than that. Uh, I definitely would. This stage and this stage are the same mass, and then you've got more mass on top here. So I'm not entirely clear why the center mass is down here, except for maybe the case for these separation motors. Let's let's try that out. Hold on. Uh, let's say I take these off. No, doesn't move that much. Again, uh, this stage and this stage are the ex uh, well almost exact same thing. Um, different separation motors and also different utilization. Let me go over that in a bit. Uh, okay, so as far as utilization is concerned, uh, this one is utilized to 86%. Uh, the upper stages I've set at 90% uh, simply because they're bearing less mass so it should be alright. Okay, so 90% utilization there and there. Okay, but yeah, and of course I've set the burn times to 50 seconds which is the max for the Air B unless we've, we haven't unlocked any upgrades so uh, lots of stuff around here. Um, yeah, so if we check here once we unlock other stuff, it'll be better, but the WAC Corporal one is only 50 seconds, so that's what we're going with. And so, yeah, this rocket, it's a little bit complicated. These are B9 procedural wings, by the way. I've tilted them just a tiny bit. I don't even know if you can see the tilt on them. Uh, so that's very mild. We'll see how that is. Um, uh, the reason I don't put, them, uh, put other B9 procedural wings higher up is because... Uh, they you can't make them any smaller than this. I mean, uh, not too much smaller anyway. Um, yeah, I, the the width doesn't go down. The length doesn't go down much. So yeah, uh, the these fins, these basic fins, end up much smaller than the B9 wings. I mean, they're really wings. Um, now, and you, you wonder why I haven't put fins up there and. A, because the atmosphere is so thin up there that I don't expect the aerodynamics to really have any effect, though I also had that expectation in the first episode, and it turns out that aerodynamics were a thing. Um, also, mass, right? Uh, you're adding mass by adding the fins. Uh, that cuts down your delta V, and if we can make this work without the fins, that'd be nice. If it turns out we need the fins, then we'll put it on, and then we will have to bite the delta V bullet on that. But we might as well test it out first. I mean, these aren't expensive rockets. Uh, the thermometer and barometer are down here, underneath the thing, so well protected. Again, we don't have any guidance unit. We just have the the telemetry unit, this little guy here. So that's that. I've called it Boomer for obvious reasons. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's action group the. I don't know where it's gonna end up, but we might as well try. We're basically the plot is I'm waiting for um, the other technology to unlock. Early orbital rocketry will unlock in 227 days, so I figure we might as well do something interesting while I'm waiting, rather than just time warping through those 227 days to get other engines. So this is the the Araby model, and this is how I envision it. Uh, I'm sure uh, others would come up with different solutions, but here I am. Okay, so... And it should be interesting. I want to see what Test Flight ends up doing with it. Test Flight could do really horrible things to this. Uh, but uh, And in the previous version, it did. Uh, in the previous version, uh, there's, there was no way to ignite all the engines safely. Uh, and you know, 19 engines first stage, 19 engines second stage. There should be a high probability of failure, but will there be in this new test flight? Uh oh. Okay. Um, 
little uh, GUI issue there, but all right, analyze telemetry. So we'll we'll have to see about that. Okay, so we have first artificial satellite as expected. Periapsis will have to be above 150 kilometers. Uh, we have to click science, recovery or transmit. I do not have a parachute on that rocket, by the way. That is just a nose cone on top. Uh, it's not a protective nose cone, so uh, we'll see whether the 1073 Kelvin is good enough. Uh, the reason I didn't use a parachute, which would have actually better protection on it, is because of mass. And the reason I didn't use the protective nose cone is that apparently we can't scale it anymore. So it's just its own size and it's huge. So that's not really helpful. Anyway, I'm going to accept this contract, which gives us a huge advance. Uh, we've got eight years to achieve it, which should be fine. Uh, obviously, failure is not an option there. Uh, so yeah, okay. Uh, sounding rocket low. Uh, 75 kilometers with a sounding rocket. Well, we'll do that anyway. We might as well pick it up and get some uh, some credit for that. Sounding rocket medium, 220 kilometers. This one might end up there. Might end up there. Yeah. So I'll take care of the Kerbal construction time warp, and then I'll see you on the launch pad. Okay, here we are with Boomer 1. I've tried to fix for the clouds, so we'll see how that works. Trial is up. No SAS. Whew. Let's go. I think all the engines lit. See, uh, in the old version with a uh, test flight, the en all, all the engines, 19 engines, the probability that they'd all light is virtually nil. I mean, test flight is doing its thing. Data units, mean time before failure and everything. I don't know if it's spinning fast enough or not. Hasn't gone out of control. It's deviating a bit now. I should probably have it spinning faster. So more tilt to the wheelance at the bottom there. Oh, looking good so far. Uh oh, uh, uh, one engine went out. So we had a failure. And some of them are iffy. But it still seems to be okay. Wow, this is really exciting. Especially for the people of Florida who have no idea where it is. Okay, Sep. Ignition. Vapor in the feed lines. Uh, I think that was on the other stage. This stage seems to be fine. Mm, but our, our, our spin is slowing down. The, these fins are straight. I should add tilt to them. So the straight fins are sort of trying to keep it at prograde, I think. One engine out. It's producing some deviation, I'm sure. Uh, we're definitely not uh, not oriented in a way that the Floridians will like. Okay, we might be turning into a better, better direction here. Okay, that went out. And ignition. Well, now we're not such a great direction. Well, I think we'll make some record or something. I mean, it's uh, telling us Contract complete, 2,000 meters per second. Sounding rocket low is done, 1,500 meters per second. Uh-oh. Things have changed badly. Where's all the things? Where's Florida? I think we might have uh, ended up keeping Florida safe with this. I don't know. Hmm. Oh, no, up there. I don't know. My, my changes to the clouds always do something wrong. And we might actually end up in the Gulf of Mexico at this rate. Okay, hot stage. Well, we're getting records left and right here. Uh, we've passed the 220 mark, so we got that contract fulfilled. 
Okay, well, uh, it didn't manage to continue burning. It failed before then. Engine shut down. Um, again, 50 second burn time, but apparently you can't always rely on that, and this time we fell short. What is our apoapsis, anyway? I don't have my MechJeb readouts, apparently. I need to import those in. Uh, apoapsis, 1,497 1, kilometers. Okay, well, let's do some science. Uh, sure, uh, transmit data. Hopefully we'll get it this time. Just above Earth's water. Um, I don't know where we're going to end up uh, actually having this land. Okay, let's see what the map says. So, uh, we ended up... Look at that. We launched... I mean, obviously the other stages will probably hit Florida somewhere. Can't get by without hitting Florida. But uh, we'll, we'll end up in the Pacific, actually. Clear shot above Central America. Interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm actually surprised it worked as well as it did, frankly. I think uh, a lot of you are too. But uh, here it is. Well, let's, let's... Oh, I don't have persistent rotation in. Well, we got many records. Uh, debris was destroyed. Uncrewed altitude record of 1,000 kilometers. 900, 800, 700, 600, 500, 400, 5,000 meters per second. Yep. Okay, here we go. 100 kilometers. Let's see where it dies. Very important information. Okay, well, the, the core is still... Ah, well, that's the end of it. 54 kilometers. All right. Well, disintegration, as expected. Let's go back to the Space Center. All right, so I was sort of emboldened by that result, and I think I'll do a slight variation on it. I've uh, I've increased the capacity capacity utilization to 100% on all the stages, so we've maximized our our abilities here. I've uh, reduced the size of the actual tanks to make sure that we still have only a 50 second burn time all the way through, and I've given the rocket a slight tilt towards the ocean in the hope that we won't go go back to the Gulf of Mexico or the Pacific Ocean this time and we'll end up in the Atlantic. I've also added a little bit more tilt to the fins down here and then the converse tilt to the fins up here in the hope that we'll, uh, we'll uh, de-spin and then spin in the other direction on this stage and then again the little rockets here correct that and spin the other way after that. Uh, so hopefully we'll maintain orientation better the capacity use, utilization increase doesn't help us that much. Uh, you see we have 8,112 meters per second instead of just 8,000. So it wasn't a huge difference. Um, I could try and build a bigger stage at the bottom. Uh, that's a possibility, but I think we'll go with this for now. Uh, yep, yeah, I think that's all the important parts spoken for. Let's call this Boomer 1A. 1-A, perhaps. And build one of these. Did not pass the editor checks. We won't size limits exceeded. Uh, width. Now length is more than twelve meters. Uh, okay, different launch clamps. That's what I'm feeling here. Different launch clamps. I mean, because without the launch clamps, obviously it's. I don't know how it's nine meters in width. Height ten meters. I understand that, but I guess tilting the rocket just a little bit drives the engineer report insane or something uh well that makes the editor and i mean engineer report happy let's do it like that then well it looks like uh even though that one did not pass the editor checks it's still trying to build it i don't know what's going to happen in that case so we've got two of them building here let's see what happens i don't know we could always scrap it for parts if it decides it can't launch it we are just waiting for technology to unlock at this point anyway. And we've got quite a lot of funds. Okay, well, let's let's roll that one out. Oh, size limits exceeded, so we can't roll it out. All right, let's warp till the other one's finished. Okay, here we are. Throttle up. Let me move the launch clamps to when the engines ignite. And we can see that we have a slight tilt towards the east, which is the intent. Uh, the intended tilt, so that's good. 
All right, let's see what happens. Well, we probably need to be spinning a little bit faster than that, actually. I think gravity's gonna suck this one in a little bit too quickly. We'll see, though. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, at uh, lower than 1,500 meters, per, uh, meters in height, and we've uh, already gotten to 55 degrees, I mean, this isn't gonna go well. At least it's not aimed at Florida. I'm pretty sure Far is gonna rip this apart eventually. Okay, we're going full speed into the ground now. Still, the WAC Corporals are doing really, really well. I, I suspect that the, their real reliability is somewhere in between what they were in the previous Realism Overhaul series and this one. Uh, I don't think they're this good, I don't think they were that bad. So somewhere in between probably lies the truth. So maybe I'll try tilting the fins a little bit more. But that'll be the last try with this rocket, I think. Alright, well, I'm surprised Far didn't rip it apart earlier. I guess it was very streamlined. Okay. Alright, here we are again. And the only change, again, is a slight tilt change to the initial fins, the first stage fins. And also, maybe a slight change to the tilt of the rocket. I made it, made it a little bit milder. We'll see how that works. Okay, here we go again. Still not a very, very quick spin. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's gonna be good enough. But somewhat more refined anyway. The initial tilt will have to be even milder. And I would like more thrust weight ratio here. I mean, I've got this stage with the same number of engines as the second stage, so that's obviously not ideal. Already at 30-ish uh, degrees, not good. Okay, stage two. Well, at least it ignited properly. Could have been vapor and feed lines or something like that. Now it's got to start spinning the other way. Yeah, definitely more like a surface-to-surface -surface missile than, uh, than anything else. We'll just see how the different stages work out like this. See what kind of speed we get in the low atmosphere. Again, at least we kept the people of Florida safe, but it's come at a cost here. We are now exceeding Mach 3, I believe. Where is FAR when you need it? Oh, I need to upgrade FAR. It's at 0.4 now. Oh, oh not yet Mach 3, it says. Because we're descending, I suppose. Vapor and feed lines, I doubt that. Yeah. Okay, well. This might, you know. If, it, if that was a parachute, this would have survived. So at this point, I think I'm just going to wait for the orbital technology, the early orbital rocketry, and then we'll see what I can do with that towards building an orbital rocket which will have to be heavier because we we need the guidance units to control it uh, to make sure its trajectory is all right instead of just you know hoping for the best with the right tilt and you know given the thrust to weight ratio the thrust to weight ratio on the first stage of the boomer one is too low to uh, sort of expect it to have a good trajectory with a tilt like that we'd have to have a higher thrust to weight ratio initially in order to make that work out 
Okay, but we've got or early orbital rocketry complete, so let me go to the VAB and see what I can do. Alright, so here I am in the VAB, and I just noticed something when toying with the Boomer 1A. First of all, we've unlocked the XASR configuration for the for the error beam, so that's a better configuration that allows it to run for 65 seconds, so we can make improvements based on that. But also, uh, on this R&D XASR1, it says that we can hire teams to add data to the selected part to improve its reliability. For now, I'm not going to do that, but that's an interesting thing if we want to pay funds for it. So that's an interesting little feature. But let me just uh, take a look and see what happens if we if we upgrade all of the engines on here to the XASR and uh, increase the burn time to 65 seconds on each stage. Okay, well, it's a much bigger rocket. It's twice the mass of the Boomer 1. It's 20 tons. Uh, but it also has a convincing amount of delta V, uh, 10,000 meters per second. Uh, so I've decreased the tilt a bit. Now the fins being the same size as they were before probably means that this doesn't have nearly enough spin to maintain its orientation. But uh, why do we see? Uh, now it's much more expensive than it used to be because the XASR is much more expensive. Uh, well, you have to pay for the upgrade. Um, but uh, maybe uh, launching it once will be an instructive thing. So uh, yep, I'm gonna save and we're gonna build one and we'll see what happens and then I'll move on to the orbital rocketry I don't know maybe this should be like the boomer episode and then the next one will be uh, I think I'm gonna go with the name Buster for the for the next one but we'll see uh, before I forget we should queue up some more technology because of course it's gonna take a while to happen uh, I think early avionics is definitely the thing we want we want the Explorer core we want all these other experiments so no-brainer there uh, we're gonna get that started and uh, who knows how long it's gonna take after that uh, early construction uh, which will increase our procedural fairing diameter and uh, well these are all really big parts basic orbital rocketry instead of early orbital rocketry is probably a better bet it'll give us a better selection of engines and stuff that we can actually use with the early construction we'll probably by that time get uh, enough Science. I mean, we only need like three more signs to get early construction anyway. So let's uh, start this one off next. Okay. All right, here we are. You can see now that rockets barely tilted at all. Yeah, not much tilt visible on the nav ball. Hopefully, it'll still go the right way. I mean, it is it is perceptibly tilted slightly to the east, just a little tiny bit. Okay, here we go. The spin is not happening very quickly. Acceleration is also really low. I should just not go with 65 seconds for this stage or add more engines. Yeah, I mean, uh, with so low TWR, it's just gonna get sucked in. At least we'll get some data points. Data units are being acquired. But I think this is enough of the Arabies for now. We, we might uh, try one for fun later on, but I think we need to try and build a proper orbital rocket with guidance, you know. Uh, can we get some science quickly? 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 No! Flying over shores. Explosions don't take that long to happen. I think it's because of the transmission and everything. All right. Yep, let me try and build a proper guided rocket. All right, so here we have the Buster 1. And the upper two stages are just like the Boomer. And so we've got the instruments down there. We've got the single XASR there, and uh, the Boomer 2, so XASR instead of the WAC Corporal. And uh, here we have the seven XASRs. And I've also added little uh, nitrous oxide attitude jets so that we can control it because we have a guidance unit here. And that's, of course, adding a lot of mass. That's 0.6 tons. 
And uh, we've got the fuel here. Uh, except I thought I had nitrous oxide in here. Well, hold on. I had added nitrous oxide in here, but maybe I didn't uh, update or something. So I'm going to... I don't know how much nitrous oxide I need. I'm just going to add 10,000 units. Update. And I'm going to add the fuel. And again, I'm going to time it so that we have a minute and five seconds, which is how long the XASRs can burn for, they're rated for. That Actually, the fact that I didn't have the nitrous oxide in already means that we've reduced our delta V a bit. But uh, there we are. We needed another guidance unit because each guidance unit can only handle 20 tons. We don't have anything else yet. This is the earliest guidance unit, uh, 20 tons. So we needed another one on the lower stage as well. And this is, uh, well, it's basically a redstone, but uh, uh, in this case we're using the RD-103 because it has more thrust. It has uh, 469 kilonewtons vacuum. It has less ISP. Uh, it has the two degrees, uh, two degrees of gimbal and has less uh, burn time. Its burn time is 112 seconds, so that's why 1 minute and 52 seconds. Uh, compared to this stage, which is the actual uh, A6 and A7, which is the redstone engine. And uh, here the burn time is uh, 2 minutes and 25 seconds for the A6 and 2 minutes and 45 seconds for the A7. Uh, so that would be much nicer, but its thrust is too low. Its thrust is only 395, 396 kilonewtons. And you can see our sea level thrust to weight ratio with this engine is 1.38. So yeah, that's not that good. I tried using the AJ-10. Um, over here, but it didn't have a uh, significant benefit over this stage, uh, not for its price, which is 150. Uh, the Aerobees, uh, seven of them is only 70, so it's cheaper to use the Aerobees. Actually, in terms of thrust, uh, the AJ1037 uh, gives us 33.8, whereas the seven Aerobees configured to XASR give us double that. So you get double the thrust, uh, less efficiency, but the extra thrust is really helpful. Anyway, uh, well, we'll try it. I mean, we might uh, replace it with the AJ-10. He even contemplated the old using the Vanguard in an upper stage thing, because the Vanguard has good uh, ISP too. I thought of a four-stage version. I've, uh, I've tried a lot of different things. But, I mean, this has much better ISP than the engine I'm actually using. Unfortunately, the Vanguard doesn't have the thrust. It has only 133 kilonewtons, so that's a little bit underwhelming. Okay, so let's put launch clamps on this, and then we'll build it, and then we'll see what happens. Now, generally, when I try to go to orbit, I plan for 9,500 meters per second of delta V, and uh, so this might not work out. It might not get us far enough. There might also be communication problems, which is another thing. But it's a cheaper solution than most other ones, so we'll give we'll make this our first attempt, and we'll see what happens, and then we'll follow up with better attempts after that. Okay, uh, no no operational SAS modules, so we have the guidance unit, but no SAS. Okay, uh, how about MechJeb? Will we have Smart ESS capable of doing things? Because controlling it by hand is a little bit dodgy. I don't know. We'll have to see. Alright. Uh, electric charge is running out quickly. Let's go. Oh, that didn't work out. Okay. Uh, well, let's try and recover this. Okay, so uh, Smart ESS seems to do it with some wiggling. Alright. Lots of wiggling. But considering the state of our launch, Okay, so we'll have to stage the engines and launch clamps separately now. We have reached that point, apparently. Yeah, smart ASS. Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, Alright, engine failure on the RD-103. That was quick. So much for 750 seconds mean time before failure. Well, um, well, let's test the other systems, set. Ah, uh, those engines apparently did not light.
feed pressure too low. Oh, is that the wrong type of tank? No, it can't be. It's just a resized version of the same stage I used before. Well, probably it's because of the rocking around and all. Okay, fuel was not settled. So that was a failure. Uh, so apparently the RD-103 is much less reliable than a WAC Corporal. That's an interesting fact. Uh, let me try building one more of those, but then we'll have to reevaluate whether to use that engine at all or not. Also, we'll have to fix the staging, obviously. Okay, here we go. Let's try this again quickly because of the electric charge. Throttle up. Ignition. And not launch. Launch. And execute Smart ESS. Smart ASS definitely has some wiggles, even if we launch solidly. Hmm. Okay, off. I I I'll do it manually, it's fine. It's fine. Manually without SAS is a little bit harsh. Just a little bit. And only two degrees of gimbal, mind you. Oh boy. It does want to wiggle all over the place. Ah, I've lost it. I've lost it. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll wait until better avionics, darn it. This is a little bit harsh. With Smart ESS acting up and no SAS to help me out here. Alright, well this isn't going to have any good result. Let me go back to the Space Center and let's see when we unlock some SAS. Yeah, I mean I could spin stabilize it, but that sort of defeats the purpose of the whole guidance unit thing. And of course if we have better avionics, we'll have lighter guidance units, so that would be nice too. Okay, so early avionics. Do we get SAS units? That's a 60 ton one. doesn't say this one is command this uh, the Explorer 1 probe has an SAS unit I wonder why actually uh, I I don't recall uh, was Explorer 1 did uh, Explorer 1 actually have an S uh, anything like that I don't know uh, this able avionics package obviously does so uh, let's just wait until we unlock early avionics that is the next technology that we are trying to unlock uh, 153 days, perhaps we can get some upgrades to, we've got two points, let's increase our R&D speed, and let's see, uh, 126 days left now. Okay, so uh, in the next episode, I will have early avionics, and I'll be able to control my rockets a little bit better. We'll still maybe try a boomer or two, but uh, we'll try and get to orbit with the help of early avionics. All right. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.